Lewis Hamilton was absolutely fuming at the end of the Dutch Grand Prix after finishing fourth when he thought his first win of the season was in reach. After I finished watching the race, I was not sure. Could Hamilton have won the Dutch Grand Prix? So I'm going to lean heavily into some race timing data and break it down for you. We're going to look at each of the decisions and events that impacted Hamilton's race and ultimately answer that one big question. So let's get started. The first half of the race is the most important for setting up the stage to answer the big question. The Mercedes and Norris were the only front runners to start on a medium tire. It was pretty clear from the start of the race that their plan was to try and make the one stop work. Throughout the video, I'm going to refer to two different graphs. The first one is a race trace. This graph simply shows us the gap on any given lap between drivers. Along the bottom is the lap number and the distance between any two points on a given lap is their gap on the circuit. Here you can see, for example, pit stops and safety cars. The next graphic is the fuel corrected lap times. I know it sounds a little bit complicated, but I've used a simple calculation to remove the effect of fuel mass on lap time. This is great for letting us compare the pace across compounds at different fuel loads. Please feel free to pause the video if you want to study any of the graphs in detail. So let's focus on the first stint here and look at the pace of Verstappen and Hamilton. Verstappen is 0.25 seconds per lap faster on a new soft compared to Hamilton on a new medium. On lap 17, Leclerc pits and a lap later Verstappen covers. Both of them fit mediums, but the Mercedes do not flinch. Looking at the rest of the first stint, they did a brilliant job of keeping the medium tires going. So I think we've actually got a race on our hands. But in order to make the one stop work, they're going to have to run the hard tire to the end of the race. Now, strategists are always looking at other teams to try and see how they're doing on their tires. The Mercedes strategists were very happy to see that Alonso, Ocon, and Norris all pit for a hard tire not too long ago. You can see here that both of the Alpines actually favor the hard tire, with the outright pace being about three quarters of a second lap faster than their initial stint on the soft. Now, this is probably because there was a bit of traffic at the race start, and the track also appears to be pretty green now, Norris' pace on the hard is comparable to his medium on his first stint, but the deg is quite a bit lower on this. Around lap 30, both Mercedes pit for hards while Verstappen is 10 laps deep into his mediums. Their pace on this new hard tire is excellent, pretty much in line with what they saw from the other teams. Now, looking at the race trace, Lewis does lose a little bit of time overtaking Perez, and then there's this guy. Blue flag, blue flag. <laughs> Anyway, looking at the lap times a little bit closer, Russell is actually a bit faster than Hamilton on this hard stint. We're definitely going to have two Mercedes in the fight at the end, which could be a blessing or a curse. Now, let's quickly take stock. Can Lewis win the race from here? We are on lap 46. Verstappen is 14 seconds ahead. Hamilton is closing the gap on Verstappen at half a second per lap. Now, Verstappen definitely has to stop again, but Hamilton has to stick it out on the hard tire to make this work. And as misfortune has it, we don't actually get to see this Verstappen versus Hamilton battle that we've all been craving. Could Hamilton have won the race from here? Honestly, we don't really have enough data. So let's gather some more data from the rest of the race and try to piece together what could have been. Now, this is where it starts to go downhill for Lewis. Tsunoda causes a yellow flag for what he thinks is a loose wheel nut and returns to the pit lane for a set of new tires and to have his belts retightened. Then, bizarrely, he leaves the pit lane to determine he has another issue and causes a virtual safety car. Now, at this point, the entire Twitter universe is going nuts with some serious serious tin foil hat bullshit but it's not that deep. During the VSC, Verstappen pits for new hards and both Mercedes cover by pitting for new mediums. Now in short, the virtual safety card, it's kind of messed up their one stop, but they still appear to have a pace advantage. Both Hamilton and Russell are half a second per lap faster than Verstappen, albeit they are on a softer compound. Now, in order for Hamilton to catch Verstappen by the end of the race from here, he needs to be 0.6 seconds per lap faster. This is not unreasonable, but in order to catch and overtake, I think he would actually need to be faster than that. But the race is not over yet, just a few laps later, we have a full-blown safety car. Now, at this point, it's really not clear to me if the Bontas safety car hurt Hamilton's race or gave him a second chance. The safety car did two things. One, it reset the field and removed the gaps. This actually helps Hamilton, as that was the main disadvantage before the safety car was simply the gap to Verstappen. Now, number two is it also gave a virtually free pit stop to put the best tire on to the end. During the safety car, Hamilton stays out on his medium tire. Verstappen pits for a used soft and comes out behind him. Russell also encourages his pit wall to fit a soft tire and they comply. Actually, everybody in the top 10 pits for soft tires except for Hamilton and Perez. Hamilton is absolutely livid with his team and I completely understand it. At the race restart, he gets eaten alive halfway down the main straight by Verstappen. Now, after the race, we did learn that Hamilton was in the wrong engine mode, which looks like it cost him some performance, but I think the medium tire tire was actually the bigger issue here. In six laps, he goes from P1 to P4, and his hopes of a win or even a podium are completely shot. Now, let's try to address the elephant in the room before we answer that big question. 
Did Mercedes screw up? Now, if you're thinking they should have forced Russell to stay out and help Hamilton win the race by holding off Verstappen, that's absolutely crazy. After what we've just seen, if both drivers stayed out, they would have finished third and fourth behind Leclerc. After the Bottas safety car, Mercedes' best chances were P2 and P3 if both drivers had fit this off. It's fair to say they missed the trick and prioritized track position with Hamilton. Now, looking at Russell's pace on the soft, Verstappen is actually faster by a few tenths. Russell and Hamilton were pretty well matched on pace throughout the race. So so if Lewis had fit us off, think the chances that he would have won from here are very low. But what if we could rewind all the way back before the Tsunoda virtual safety car and see what happened? Well, we can, sort of. Could Lewis Hamilton have won the Dutch Grand Prix? If we go back and we take the race from lap 46 before the Tsunoda virtual safety car, there are two possible outcomes, but we need to make a few assumptions. Assumption one, Hamilton stays on the one stop. This is his only chance of winning. Number two, the hard tire has virtually zero degradation, which is pretty optimistic, but the deck is very low. Number three, I've used Verstappen's hard pace from his third stint. Now, number four, I've used Verstappen's soft tire pace and degradation from the final stint. Here are the two scenarios if we rewind and play this race through from lap 46. If Verstappen had stopped on lap 46 for a soft tire and tried to do 26 laps to the end, he would have likely run into some deg during his stint. His gap to Lewis probably would have looked something like this. After the pit stop, he would have come out about seven seconds behind Lewis and been within striking distance in about 10 laps. Now, if he had over taken Hamilton, he might have started to struggle with degradation at that point. Now, here's the second option. If Verstappen had stopped on lap 46 for a hard tire, it would have been a completely different story. After the pit stop, Verstappen would have been in striking distance in about 15 laps and cruised past him. If Max's pace was a bit slower, it would have happened a few laps later. So to answer the big question, Hamilton could have won the Dutch Grand Prix only if Red Bull had fit a soft tire. Considering the Red Bull saw everybody else enjoying the hard, I don't think they were even considering the soft. Now, that being said, I think Mercedes is genuinely closing the gap in both qualifying and race pace. I've left you a few other race analysis videos here for you to enjoy, so be sure to check them out, and I will see you after Monza.